Uh, welcome, everybody. Hi. Hi. This is the, the, the 15th Swan Song GM turn. Um, it's me. It's you. It's some spreadsheets. I've got myself a nice glass of space hall And uh, we're going to hang out, and we're going to see what's been going on in the universe of uh, Roleplay Swan Song while the characters have been running around causing havoc. Uh, I am going to warn you. We're going to warn you right now right here right now that this is a very very spoiler heavy show so if you are not caught up on uh, Swan Song as of episode 41 uh, you are going to get spoiled just reading the screen might have spoiled you uh, I'm gonna talk about the show a lot so that's the thing you might be want to be wary of um, the other thing is is that this is all background stuff so if you only want to see the universe through the eyes of Higgs and and Eric and Alfarius and Piani, um, do do that. Do that. Go go and watch the show there. This is going to show you all of the other stuff that's going on in the background. So we'll go through all the factions because it's been a while. We haven't played since uh, since October. I haven't played this this particular game together. Um, so we'll go through all the factions. We'll talk about what's going on in the background of the universe, and then we will uh, we will carry on. Uh, with what's going on now. We'll, we'll jump into the, the present. Little things that happen in the game make their way into the um, into the, the GM turn, and the stuff from the GM turn, in turn, influences the world around them. So let's, let's see what's been going on in the world of, of Swan Song. Um, so... We've got Richardson Scientific, who's been around forever. Uh, they are an organization, a scientific organization, that uh, really was there at the inception of the game. They gave the Swan Song their first mission to retrieve some mysterious object from, uh, from Andoni. Um, they have a base that's in orbit around the gas giant uh, Gunhild 7C, I think. But uh, it's on a moon. Yeah, it's a moon base. That's right. Um, but what uh, they've been doing lately, what they've been trying to do is um, expand. Their goal now is to expand their influence, and they're trying to get in on some of the other planets. Um, so Richardson Scientific, uh, they are, they're kind of our Wayland yutani They're starting to do some, some cool stuff. Um, the Purity Initiative is an organization that's been around since, I don't know, when did we introduce them? Uh, yeah, February. So they've, they've been around about a year in Swansong Canon. Uh, they seized the planet of, An of uh, Oninsa. They seized the government during a civil war. They're closely allied with the Photonara Society on that planet, and they are dramatically opposed to Majid. Um, their alliance with um, their alliance with Fotenhauer is loosely connected to um, uh, Mr. Sicarian, who has passed from the player space into the GM space, uh, and who's been advising me on how to operate the Fotenhauer Society. Um, but they're just as vehemently opposed to drugs as um, the uh, as the the now uh, leader of the Fotenhauer Society is. So they, they've been buddies on Oninsa. Mostly because Oninsa has been a big war zone for uh, a while. Uh, so it's uh, it's been key territory for them. So uh, Fotenhauer, obviously a mercenary organization. Uh, they are a splinter group. Uh, so hundreds of years ago, Fotenhauer Society and the Fotenhauer Navy were one unit. The Navy split off and became a pirate fleet which became the High Beam fleet. So now we have Fotenhauer, we have High Beam, and they fucking hate each other. Uh, they've been fighting. You can see back in December there's some heavy fighting. Um, so Fotenhauer has kind of like redoubled their efforts on Oninsa because, again, like in this space, kind of around the new year, uh, just after Christmas, um, Mr. Sicarian took over Fotenhauer again, and Fotenhauer is now going to be like, okay, we're going to go back after Oninsa. Oninsa is our jam. We want to reestablish there, so they bought a base of influence. Miss Fate is on the ground, uh, kicking ass. So they've had some, they've had some good, some good success here with their Space Marines and blowing things up there. So Fortnite is going to focus on building their their jam. They need a new goal, and they're going to focus around Oninsa because Oninsa is a place where they have a base of influence now. Oninsa is also the only Tech Level Five planet in the sector, so it's going to be important uh, for the future of uh, of the sector. 
Uh, the Republic of Cabral, uh, they are engaged in a very long, like, let me see, uh, one, two, three, four, yeah, like four month kind of like battle, like with, but, but with moles, right? So they've, they've infested the Andonian armed forces remnant, the last sort of surviving government of the planet Andonia after it's attacked by the war mind. Um, they've been trying to infest their government with these organization moles. So the moles have been fighting the infantry and kind of like taking apart the AAFR from the inside. So uh, we'll see how that goes. They failed last time, but they're, they're still engaged in that battle. Uh, because again, uh, the, the planet of Andoni is the source of all the AI we've seen. It's an ancient Shindalian colony. Um, you know, we're sort of learning, and again, massive spoiler, get ready for it. So Pi is from there. Uh, I don't know. That's that's a big deal. So Pi is originally from there. The Warmind is from there. The two of them are related in some way. So, um, you know, it's a big deal. And Cabral, being the AI religion uh, that they are, they're, um, you know, they're, they want that planet. Um, so Oninta Libre is dead. Oninta Libre died. Uh, despite the fact that back in November they were all never surrender, fuck you, you know, the the faction themselves didn't get killed. We healed them up in January, and then in February they've abandoned the cause of legitimate government. They are uh, they're all about just burning the planet down. That's their whole that's their whole jam. So they're going to try to destroy anybody who gets in their way. So Oninta Libre, we've we've renamed them. Uh, so I guess I should change their faction name here. Their their actual name is. Their new name is Oninza Muerte, death, death of the death of Oninza, and their their jam is just about destruction now. Um, we have the new prophet. So the new prophet is is kind of like trying. They're 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 trying to lock down Strophios as this like holy land. They've, they've got this very kind of like um, Jerusalem situation going on with Strophios, where Strophios. If we take a look, let's take a real, real clo close look at the. Oh, this is our new sector map. Um, big ups to Demosthenes for making this. It's badass, hey. So uh, check it out. This is this is a uh, Strophios. It's in the Varvareso system. Um, these uh, these ones there. It's the closest planet to the Caliphate. So if you look down here, the, the Caliphate is these three planets, and they're they're spreading out. So they they've moved to Varvaresos. They're trying to take over. Um, they're trying to take over the the system. But also, this is where the New Prophet fled. Because remember, the New Prophet is a splinter. It's like a Christian religion splintered off from Hoveda, trying to escape this this caliphate. And they want uh, they want to set this up as so. There's very much again like a Jerusalem, Palestine, Israel kind of battle going on here. It's also right next to AI Central, which is in Gunhild. So this whole area is kind of a hotbed of of conflict right now uh, for the new prophet. So they're in the middle of fighting uh, the Caliphate there. So the Caliphate has some people on Strophios. Um, it, it hasn't been going very well. They lost their blackmail. The demagogue has been damaged. The actual prophet uh, is is losing some uh, some some sway. So it's you know it's it's getting a little intense. Um, Majid. Uh, so Majid is the Mandarinate of the planet where um, Piani is from. They are a like an industrial concern basically, and they're kind of loosely allied with the Madari Syndicate. Uh, they're fighting the the Purity Initiative. Um, and they are, uh, they're just trying to make some money, right? Uh, Majid is where uh, uh, a certain young uh, engineer was blown up. Um, so that's, that's a thing here. So they, they bought some mercenaries last time. They're, they're trying to, um, they're trying to deal with, um, deal with the, the purity initiative. So they're going to probably go deal, like send them over to, uh, to Aninsa. Um, the Midari Syndicate, they are, I, I would argue the Midari Syndicate is, and this is appropriate, I, I would argue that they're pretty much the best, the best faction because they, they've just been like, they're, they're accomplishing their goals like crazy. Like you notice pretty much every time, so their, their goal is to get uh, influence in other sectors. They're to have, to have stealthed uh, operatives. So let's, let's take a quick look at them. Um, the Midari Syndicate, if you look, all of their stuff is stealthed, and they have it all over the place. Um, they have a, a base of influence on uh, on Asa. Um, they have a lab on Elfenor. 
They have uh, stuff in Froas, Majid, Oninsa, Cabral. Like, they, they've got an army of smugglers basically spreading out throughout the universe. And they're, they're really, like, taking... Um, they're, they're taking a nice firm hold on the on the sector. And if you look at the faction tracker too, like they're pretty close to their uh, their goal, right? Madari Syndicate inside enemy territory. Yeah, they have four out of six. So I'm gonna keep making smugglers and stuff for them. We're just gonna spread them out until they've got you know uh, a smuggler a smuggler in every port. That's kind of their goal. Um, the Caliphate again fighting for Strophios. Uh, trying to trying to wreck the blockade here. Um, there was a there was a tie last time, so they're you know they're they're, they're struggling over this area. I think that those two are going to keep being tied up in that uh, that particular action for a uh, for a while. Um, and then high beam is just on the attack right now. High beam they've it's funny because they've had they've had some success in the past right like sunbeam sunbeam's been um, you know been getting pretty fucked up by them. Um, you know, the high beam fleet has been blowing up their stuff, but every time they try to attack Fotenhauer, uh, especially on Oninsa, shit like this happens where somehow, you know, pre-tech infantry somehow, uh, Miss Fate herself and her team knocked a blockade fleet out of the sky. Uh, Fate's Rangers, they, they're, they're legendary for a reason. And the, the game is, um, <laughs> the game is, is proving to us that. The, the dice are what really tell the story, right? So we talked a little bit about the Andonian, uh, the Andonian armed forces. They're struggling with this, these moles in, in, on Cabral. Uh, and then Sunbeam. Sunbeam is an interesting group because they started off okay. They took over Zimenez shipyards, became big, tried to spread out, and then these pirates just started like coming out of the woodwork and blowing up their ships. So they fled, fled, they wouldn't say that. They uh, rustled up their doggies and uh, took a trip down to Thor Katla, where um, Jebediah Salt, uh, their, one of their CEOs, um, took, over the, uh, took over the planet. So, so now they're basically, they're the, um, they're the legit government of the planet Thor Katla. It's like a Russian, a planet, uh, and now it's run by cowboys. So they their strategic relocation uh, led them to Thorkatla, aka Sunbeam South, and uh, Sunbeam Omni Omni Stellar uh, now controls that planet. So they have a new a new home. Uh, we introduced as a faction in the last uh, the last section. Um, you know, because Warmind's been around for thousands and thousands of years, but is now active in the the sector. So we added. Um, you know, we, we added the uh, the uh, faction in the last turn, and we're gonna have to do. And let's start here, maybe. We're gonna have to add the Warmind, but the Warmind's a little bit weird. The Warmind's a, a sort of a strange faction. They don't have a base, so I'm gonna try to just bend. I'm gonna bend the rules a little for the Warmind. So let's let's talk about how we're gonna do that. Um, so for the Warmind, normally we would determine the size of the uh, uh, the faction. And that would determine whether they have, uh, you know, eight seven five or six five uh, three or like how how they would split up their their force, cunning and wealth. Um, I think I'm just going to, I'm just gonna bend. I'm gonna break the rules. The Warmind is a rule breaker, so we're just gonna name. Uh, we're just gonna. Uh, you'll see. I'm just gonna add in some numbers. So now the Warmind doesn't have the kind of force that the High Beam fleet has, but I would say that because of its flexibility, because of its ability to um, kind of like take over other factions, it's gonna be a little special. So I'm gonna give them, for rolling purposes, we're gonna give them, uh, I'm gonna say probably a six for force. I'm gonna give them a four for cunning and they're gonna have a wealth of uh, one because if you're gonna go after, if you're gonna go after the, um, yeah, we'll give them wealth of two. So if you're gonna go after the, uh, the war mind, it's going to be because um, you're gonna go after their supply lines, right? The Warmind is gonna need, um, it's gonna need to have uh, more ships. It's gonna need to refuel, right? And if you're gonna go after him, he can't just like go and trade for that stuff. So the Warmind's weakness is gonna be the the wealth part, right? Because Warmind is a big brute force thing. Um, they're also not gonna have a lot of um, 
they're not gonna have a lot of space there. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll call it 642 for right now. Now, maximum hit points are gonna be tied directly to the one unit they have. Um, so the one unit they're gonna have is gonna end up being, um, I'm gonna give them a capital fleet. So let's let's pop over the asset tracker and I'll, I'll throw down the Warmind here. The Warmind has a capital fleet. Now, what we're gonna do with this capital fleet is keep in mind the capital fleet is also the Warmind's base of influence. So as the capital fleet is destroyed, if they get into a fight, it will also determine the the hit points of the Warmind. So it's it's a capital fleet slash base of influence. So later, remind me that that's a, that's a thing that, that happens. Um, now, where is the Warmind currently? Well, let's look at the map. So the last time that we saw the war mine was kind of in empty space here, right? They were near a base. They had taken over that base and then and then the war mine, he lost it and then took the Herodon's heart. So what I think that what the war mine is going to try to do is set up that base of influence is going to try to like find a planet and and like take it over. So we have nearby, we're going to look for a TL4 planet. Um Let's see here, Enica, Laodice, what's in these sectors? So Enica, the Enica system, which is hex four, has Elfenor, which is a tech level one planet. Just some bullshit, nobody wants that. Uh, Laodice has, ah, Sigrid. Perfect. So, Space Vikings versus war mind is is a thing that is it's coming it's it's definitely coming so uh i'm gonna make a note uh on my thing here so they're not at he's not at sigrid yet no you know what fuck it let's let's get real let's let's make it big so they're in the ladisi system so 103 system uh wow dc sigrid we are gonna bombard the space vikings um God, Eric's gonna get a phone call from home right quick. Ragnarok has come. So these are the kinds of things that we we do in the GM turn so that um, things change for the players, right? Because you know, it's it's all well and good to have the players be like, yeah, no, we're just we're doing great. We're doing adventures, and we're going on adventures, and we're adventuring for money and being adventurers. But then I can be like, well, guess what? Um, two weeks ago, you got uh, you, you get this two-week-old message. Two weeks ago, your home planet was bombarded by a, a mysterious fleet, by a Fotenhauer fleet. So, uh, yeah, it's going to get real. Uh, and this is going to affect Alpharius. It's going to affect Eric. The, the wolf is awakening to swallow the sun, right? And it's going to affect Piani because Piani... The, there's that whole idea of like, well, maybe we can go back and we can discover what's up with my eye. So the Warmind doesn't have the capacity to just blow up a planet uh, like it did with uh, Andoni. It doesn't have, like it needs to refuel um, Typhoon Epsilon, but it can drop uh, uh, supplies on that planet. Now, Sigrid, it's a small enough population. They're not their own faction. They're basically defenseless in this situation. So we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, let's jump back to the faction tracker. Um, the Warmind doesn't want to blow up the... Obviously, the Warmind is warlike. Um, the Warmind doesn't want to blow up this planet. The Warmind wants to uh, expand influence. Think about this. Okay, so if it's got the ability... Holy shit, this is going to get intense. So think about this. The Warmind now has the capacity, I'm going to get all spoilery for a second, it has the capacity both thanks to Richardson to research its own psychic abilities. So Richardson on that base, on SR whatever, 389, um, their research was can we make an artificial intelligence psychic? Can we induce MES at the nanomolecular level in an artificial intelligence? So the Warmind is developing psychic powers. The Warmind is also, uh, because of the nanites, that the illegal nanites that, that the Fotenhauer ship had in its core, is now able to take over human hosts. How long before uh, undead, psychic, AI-controlled 
Viking zombies start attacking other planets. Shit just got really metal. Right? So <laughs> it's uh yeah, it's getting real. So they're gonna they're gonna try and take over uh Sigrid. Um and we're gonna have fucked up space viking zombie nano robots. Um so here's the great thing about the sector is that all this stuff can be happening. So like up here, there's all this stuff going on. There's some like holy war happening down here. There's pirates all over the sector. And eventually the war mind, even though the war mind gets really big, the only people that are going to be able to stop them are the high beam fleet or the Hovaden Caliphate, right? And if the Caliphate is too busy and the, and the Vodenhauer are too busy, they're all fighting each other, then the war mind is just going to spread. So pretty cool. Techno Vikings. Techno Vikings on the way. Um, cool. All right. Well, let's let's do the turn. So, the Warmind's goal is to expand influence. <clears throat> they want to build a base on Sigrid. So let's uh, let's get her started. So I need to determine the order in which to do this. So I have uh, thirteen factions. So let's roll the D thirteen. And we'll see where we're gonna start. I guess I should actually. Yeah, roll for me here. No? Just hates the idea of a 13-sided die. No? Okay. All right. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's try rolling a d12 and see if it likes that better. You should still be able to roll non-platonic solids. Ah, okay. So I'm I'm I got knocked out of the session. Okay, that's fine. I'll um I'll just use another die roller. It's okay. Okay, so we're gonna roll one D thirteen. And we'll see how she goes. Alright, so we're gonna start with Faction number six, I'll roll a couple. So six, five, 11, 12. Thirteen, ten. One, two, five. And we got five already. So one, two, four. Okay, there we go. All right. Cool. Let's uh, let's jump back in. So, um, Mr. Sinister was asking, why doesn't Luminary have a faction? Um, they exist cross-factionally, kind of like the Exchange. Like the Exchange won't get a faction. They exist in a bunch of different uh, different places. Yeah, they're kind of outside the faction structure. All right. So. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. All right. Cool. So uh, we're starting with faction number six, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. The new prophet. All right. So the new prophet, they're 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 busy. They're fighting. They want to fight. Um, they want to fight for Strophius. They're fighting for the Holy Land. So we're going to uh, we're going to take a quick look at them uh, dealing with that. So if we pop over to the asset tracker, we can see they're going to take the attack action. And the attack action for them allows them to make an attack on any planet they have assets. So on Strophios, they can attack with the demagogue, with the organization moles, and I think that's it. They have transport lockdown. Ah, OK, so they can attack, they can attack with all three of those. And the blockade runners don't have an attack. OK. OK. So they're going to attack with Hoveden Caliphate on Strophios with, we got three, what did I say, three different assets they can use. So OK. So their first asset is the demagogue. Now this is a risk, right? Because the demagogue might have to go into hiding if he suffers damage. So the demagogue, the orgmoles, 
and uh, lockdown. Okay, so all three of those. Um, they also, do they have any uh, additional bonuses or anything? Uh, no, they're Machiavellian. So on cunning attacks, they get uh, advantage once. So the advent on cunning. All right. So first things first, they're going to use the demagogue, I think. And what does Caliphate, what does Caliphate have on that planet? Let's reorg for Strophios here. Here we go. All right, so Hoveda has the organization moles of their own, and they have the popular movement. So the demag it's going to be demagogue versus popular movement, uh, because this is the demagogue uh, basically coming out against the popular movement of uh, Islam on, on the planet Strophios. And um, they're basically just saying, like, the demagogue makes a speech, and the popular movement rejects it, or... or is crumbled by it, right? So they're they're doing some battle there. Um, so the Hobaden Caliphate, they're going to attack, and this is a cunning. Let's see, demagogue is cunning versus cunning, I believe. Uh, let's see, demagogue, yeah, cunning versus cunning. So CVC, and we're looking at new profit of six versus Hoveda of eight. Okay, six v eight. Okay, so first attack. And this is the one I think I'm going to use advantage on. Let's see if uh, I mean, this is just a test roll. Uh, now it looks like we're still we're still stuck. Okay. Uh, let me let me re uh, let me refresh. I want you all to be able to see what I'm doing. Ah, okay. <laughs> cool. Thanks for loading my other game. Uh, give me a second, everybody. That's not Swan song. That was the Blades in the Dark game that I was playing earlier today. Okay, I've rolled my computer skill. Let's see if I have uh, have loaded up properly this time. One second. Yeah, it's tough because if you, I, I realize I have another tab open with or another window open with this uh, with this game. So let's see. Swan song. There she is. All right. Bump that down to the bottom, and we are back in business. Okay. So let's see if we can uh, get a D10 going on this one. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So we're all ready. So um, we need to roll a D10 plus 6 versus a D10 plus 8. So this is going to be the attack. Uh, and we pick the best of the two. Uh, okay, so I've got a three plus six, so it's nine versus d10 plus eight. It's not going to go very well. Best we can get is a tie. Okay, so it's a tie. So that means both of them are successful. So we get the attack and the counterattack. So the demagogue deals 2d8. And the counterattack by the popular movement is 1d6. All right, so you roll 2d8 damage and 1d6 damage. So the damage to the popular movement is 11. And the damage to the demagogue is 5. Woo, demagogue getting fucked up. All right, so that means the caliphate takes their popular movement is reduced to two, and the demagogue is also reduced to two. Okay. Uh, all right, so um, three. Let's see, eleven damage to pop move, and five damage to demagogue. Yeah, the demagogue is an intense attacker. Okay. Uh, so now their second attack against the Caliphate is with um, moles. So first of all, first of all, the um, 
the the demagogue makes a bunch of speeches the popular movement tries to reject it and gets like disorganized then strophios uh their their controllers the new prophet sends out their men into the organization and tries to take them apart from the inside so the org moles uh are 2d6 damage if they win uh 2d6 and then they're going to defend with uh popular movement again i think that makes the most sense so with popular movement yeah you can just imagine these are giant organized moles and let's see who wins so this is the um d10 plus six this is the new prophet Oh, did you time out on me again? Nope. Oh, 1D0. Good work, Adam. There we go. Okay, so 8. So now we're rolling. Oh, I don't think... Hmm. I don't think they can even do anything about this. So D10 plus 8 for cunning to defend. Boop. 13. Okay, so they failed. So fail... And the counterattack is uh, how much damage for them? Counterattack for the um, popular movement. Oh, it's it's the same. It's a d6. Okay. One d6. Two damage. Okay. So two to the org moles. Bring them down to six. Okay. Okay, and then last, they're gonna just try and use their blockade fleet to like keep them out, to just like st to stop, basically stop the Hovadens from dropping any more units on the planet. So they're gonna attack with transport lockdown, and it's cunning versus cunning attack. And if they succeed, then it means they have to um, let's see, spend one d four fat creds and wait a turn. So transport lockdown. And survey says, same deal, D10 plus 6. There we go. Where were you a minute ago? D10 plus 8. Oh, they're defending with uh, popular movement. That's that's their main defender now. But it fails, uh, and they are locked down. Fail, uh, or it succeeded, so uh, Hoveda... Lock down one turn. Okay. Oh, yeah, I need to give them fat creds, too. I forgot to do that. Thank you. Let's do that all right now. Um, uh, 15, 7, 5, uh, 18, so 5. So 19, 17, Cabral gets 5. Oh, uh, Cabral's rich. High Beam gets 5. Uh, Hoveda gets uh, 41. And Warmind starts with 3. Okay, there we go. I did it. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, and then, yeah, they lose 1d4, or they, they would lose 1d4 fat creds uh, if they, uh, they have to spend fat creds to move their units onto, um, onto Strophios and then wait a turn, right? That's how that works. Let me double check. Yeah, without spending 1d4 fat creds. Okay, so they don't lose any. Okay, so the New Prophet has shut off the planet. They've whittled down the popular movement to two, uh, and that's, uh, that's how that goes. Oh, high beam should be 36. Oh, sorry. This is why you're the math squad. Oh yeah, I totally did give it the wrong one. There we go. Thanks. Okay. So. Yeah, I got it. Thanks, guys. Uh, okay. So that was faction six. So now we do owning some muerte. Um, muerte really needs to like get their shit together, right? So their goal is to blood the enemy but they don't have anything to do that with, right? Like they have five faction credits um, and they don't have a goal. So let's let's look at what they have available to them. Onin Samorite, a base of influence with half of its hit points. 
so they're going to need to just chill out, I think. So we're going to give them a new goal. Uh, we're going to give them the goal Peaceable Kingdom for right now. They're just in hiding. So let's go back over here. They're going to take... Oh, they just, no, they just took Blood the Enemy, didn't they? Yeah. Gosh, they're all fucked up. They need friends. Let's, um, I guess, yeah, we'll leave them with Blood the Enemy. And, um, we're gonna, we're gonna just have them build stuff. So, they need money, so let's build them some harvesters, maybe. Uh, one second. There we go. Okay, yeah, they're gonna build harvesters. So, let's go, they got five credits. Asset tables, how much does a harvester cost? Cost two. Okay, so let's do that. Okay. Yeah, oh my god. Oh, that's such a good idea. Fargnotic, uh, they should just ally with the Warmind and have the Warmind blow up their planet because that they're just, oh, that's so good. Oh man, I love it. Give it time. <laughs> Give it time. All right, so it costs them two, so they're down to three. And asset tracker, we're going to add them in a row. Insert one below. Oh, we'll need some Arte. And harvesters. Oh, hold on. No, I got to add them to the bottom of the list. Harvesters. We have four hit points. And those harvesters are on Oninza. There we go. Um, so Oninza Marte is hostile to the Swan Song because they hate Fotenhauer. Because uh, Fotenhauer destroyed their their chances of winning. Yeah, if nobody can, if we can't have Oninza, no one can. They're gonna blow up the only TL5 planet in the system. I'm sure the Warmine won't want to take any of its stuff or whatever. That'll be fine. All right, so bot harvesters on Onyansa. Good, okay. All right, faction 11, so the second last one, Sunbeam. So Sunbeam, they're doing great. They've got they've got Thor Catla uh, on, on lock. Um, I think that they just, yeah, last time they just finished their their goal, so they need a new one. They, um, they, they, they have a planet. So let's, let's give them a new goal. Um, I think that they want to, hmm, maybe they want to expand their influence. Nah, that spreads them a little thin. Let's give them peaceable kingdom. They, they need to, they need to rest for a while now that they're planetary governors of, of Thorkatla. So we'll add that goal. So they got a new goal. Peaceable kingdom. It's about profits, not battle. Uh, they've done one of four, and they're going to buy something, I think. Yeah, yeah buy shit. So let's buy them some cool stuff. They have 10 faction credits, and they currently have probably very little in the way of like decent shit. Yeah, strike fleets and bases of influence. Let's um let's buy them let's buy them something cool. Um let's buy them. Uh no, they didn't change their goal, they got a new goal because they resolved their last one. Uh let's buy them. Something force-wise, maybe. What's their force at? Five? Oh, no, let's buy them a uh, wealth asset. Because they've got... How many credits do they have right now? What do we say? Ten? Ugh, that's not actually that much. They could buy marketers. Nah. Buy a medical center. Maybe they should just chill out because they don't really, they don't really have, like, I want them to buy, like, a transit web or something like that. Like, I want them to buy something big, like a manufactory, 
but that costs so much. So maybe they should just like chill and not buy anything right now. Oh, they need tech level five for transit web. Okay, well let's let's do that then. Let's buy them. Um, uh, where's it? Pre tech researchers? Yeah, let's buy pre tech researchers on that planet. Oh, it's too expensive still. Shit. Okay, maybe they'll just pass because they need money. Let me see if they have anything they can activate abilities on. Uh, bank. Oh, post tech infant. Okay, so they're just gonna run. They'll activate their abilities and they'll chill out. So they need money. So they have an industry to use. Uh, post tech industry. Industry. Let's see if it works. Uh, so they're not gonna buy anything this turn, and they're gonna use their industry, and the industry is roll a d6. On a one, they lose a cred, a two, nothing, three to five, they gain one, and a six returns two. Okay. Looks like, oh yeah, six, good job. There are record profits on this new planet. Shit's looking up. So Sunbeam goes up to 12. First quarter, first quarter in 3201 is great. They're making, they're, there's a new model of like giant space truck and it's selling like hotcakes. Perfect, okay, you're good. Um, Warmind, I think you are up next. Um, Oh, no, hold on. It's the one before them. So it's the AAFR. Okay. Sunbeam stock is at an all-time high. Exactly. All right, so the AAFR, uh, they are going to keep hammering away at Cabral, I think. They're going to try to deal with these these moles. So the AAFR have a very weak post-tech infantry. They're going to attack Cabral on Andoni. Same as before, we're gonna try to f get rid of these filthy invaders. Oh yeah, they get to activate their R&D, but I don't know, does R&D, R&D doesn't do anything for them, it just allows them to do stuff. Yeah, it means that all the planets they're on are tech level four, so they don't need to do anything with that. So they're gonna attack, uh, attack Cabral with the post-tech infantry, and they're gonna defend with the moles, just like last time, and we'll see who wins this fight. So we're looking at force v force, which is four versus Cabral's three. And they're warlike, so they've got uh, advantage on this roll. All right, so roll 2d10. And we're adding four to the highest one. There we go, we got a 10. And then we're rolling a d10 plus three to defend. 10 versus 10, it's a tie. Lots of ties this time, okay. So they both, uh, both the attack and the counter attack work. So the attack deals a d8. And the counter attack by Cabral the La République du Cabral is um, nothing. Ah, no counterattack. Oh, hold on. Was that an 11? No, it's a... Oh, yeah, that's right, because I was looking at this. It's 6 plus the 4. No, it's 6 plus the 4 they have. Yeah. I don't, I'm not adding them together. I'm picking the highest one. So it is. It's 6 plus 4 versus 7 plus 3. Yeah, it's a tie. But it doesn't matter because there's only... There's no counterattack. So D8 damage, two, okay. Two damage to the organization moles, bringing them down to one hit point. Uh, okay, so tie, no counter. Uh, what do we say, two damage? Two damage, two moles. So the, I thought, I totally thought that Cabral was gonna have an easier time here, but that's how it goes, okay. All right, so they, they're they rooting out these moles. This is more like people dragged out into the post-apocalyptic street and executed for being Cabrales spies. This is a military crackdown. This is um, this is like French blood in the streets. 
Um, so yeah, cool. All right, so now it's the war mind. So war mind, uh, war mind, you are. You're gonna create. You're gonna create a base. I think. I think you're gonna just do it because there's no one stopping you on Laodice. So, the war mind is going to make a, a base of influence, and we're gonna see how that goes. So there's no one to attack uh, or no one to stop. Uh, no one to stop them on uh, on Sigrid. So I think they just get what they want because there's no attacks. But I have to determine how much they co how much it costs, right? Like they have six, I think. So there we go. We have six to six base. They're gonna take the uh, what is it called? It's actually called the action is called like base of influence. Everyone on that planet would get a free shot on them, but there's no faction to oppose them. So on some forgotten continent somewhere on Sigrid, a single sort of like gloopy nanite pod lands in the distance. Uh, and I think the government of Sigrid is like, oh, hey, like a strange meteor. We better go check that out. And they're gonna send some people to investigate. And now, now it spreads. So the Vikings aren't, they're not big. They're not a faction. So unless like an actual faction gets involved or the PCs get involved, nothing can be done. Um, Exactly, not an army, a collection of squabbling thanes. You got it. Okay, so the base of influence is in place. That means Warmind achieved his goal. Base of influence on Sigrid. And uh, and they get Warmind gets one experience point. Congratulations, Warmind. And your goal is resolved. We'll pick a new goal for you next time. All right, Warmind is done. So next up after the Warmind is Hoveda, I think. Uh, nope, High Beam. High Beam. Okay, so High Beam for my notes, I put just attack everybody. So let's see where High Beam has people they can attack with. So High Beam, uh, they have. Uh, <laughs> they have their capital fleet on Thorkatla. Oh god. <laughs> okay, so Thorkatla. Uh, where else? Um, Pelasgon, which is kind of home. Girgia, which I think is also home. And then Asa, which they kind of control. Is there anyone else on Asa they can attack? Nope. Stealthed. Let me let me flip through. I'll do these in order. So Asa, High Beam can attack. Oh no, they can totally they can totally start bombing Sunbeam facilities on Asa. Okay. So Thorkatla and on Asa. Uh yeah, and they're not attacking Photon Hour, so everything's good. Okay. So High Beam is gonna start bombing the shit out of Sunbeam. So the first action they're taking is attack Sunbeam on Asa. Defend with Um I guess they'll blow up post tech industry. Just give them a target, I guess. Um, and uh, yeah, okay. So there's there's a counterattack of a D four if they fail, and it's I think force v force here because they're attacking. Sorry, what did I say they were attacking with on Asa? High beam. Uh, blockade. Oh no, they don't have anything they can attack with. They can just they just have blockade runners. Okay, so they're not they're not doing any attacking there because blockade runners can't uh, can't attack. So sun sunbeam is lucky. Um, they need to get some units over there. Uh, they have space marines and Girgia. Maybe we should move them instead. Let's see where else they can attack. Yeah, Thorkatla. Okay, so they're gonna attack the strike fleet. We're gonna have a little little battle here. I forgot that High Beam was there. Okay, so let's attack Sunbeam. They're pirates. This is their their goal. Their their goal is to attack um, Thorkatla, capital fleet. Defend with strike fleet, like last time. And let's see if they attack. So 
Uh, it's force v force, right? Uh, capital fleet. Yep, force v force, and we're looking at eight v five. Okay. D10 plus 8 versus D10 plus 5. Okay, so the capital fleet succeeds. And let's see if you blow up that strike fleet. God, Sunbeam is getting wrecked. Um, so the damage for that is like 3D10 plus 4. Christ, they only need to deal 2 damage. But let's see how badly they blow them up. You're toast, strike fleet. Uh, 3d10 plus 4 damage. <laughs> That's a lot of beams. 3d10 plus 4. It's 22 damage. Yeah, it's sufficient. Okay, so I blew up their strike fleet. Do they have anything else they can attack with? That's such a mess. Somebody's got to come save Sunbeam, basically. It's not going to be Photonhour. It's funny because the pirates will just take over the legit business. Uh, high beam. No, I think that's it. Okay, so next turn we'll move those space marines, I think. Uh, or we'll just keep bombing Tharkatla. God, the pirates are so mean. Now, they have a, they have a thing. They have uh, an ability, I think. Let me see. Pirates. Um... No, that's not what Pirates does. Oh, no, that is. It is. They keep their homeworld safe, right? Yeah. A military conquest. Destroy a number of force assets, which they did. So they just did another one. So they're halfway there. This is why I just attack everything I can with them. Because they've, they've blown up half the... <laughs> they've destroyed four units already with that capital fleet. Uh, okay. Good. Uh, cool. All right, so Howard and company are doing a fine job. So now we go up to the top to Richardson. Now Richardson's goal is to build a, a new base somewhere. They want to build a base on Oninsa. So what we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, how much money does Richardson have? Nine? Mm, okay. Yeah, I mean, like, fuck it, right? So let's... Oops. Expand influence. They've got smugglers on that planet now, or something. They have surveyors, I think. Richardson, you've got... Yeah, surveyors on Strophios, and you've got... Oh, weird. I think I was I was moving them last time, right? Because I said move them to Strophios in transit to an inside. Okay, so they're going to activate abilities. And they're going to move surveyor to... So Strophios is here, right, because they went from here to here. We're going to move them to 305. OK. Nice easy turn. En route, I guess it's on the loot to Oninsa. OK, perfect. All right, so they're moving en route to Oninsa, because their plan there is to build a um, uh, planet there. Now they have two harvesters, so let's see if those harvesters do OK. So the gas harvester first operates. And let's see. I guess we'll see if it succeeds. So harvesters, how do those work again? Harvesters. We roll a d6. On a 4 or better, they get a fat crit. OK. So here's the gun hilt. Yeah, 1. And here's the other one, 6. OK, so they get 2 credits. Starts on gun hilt. Plus one cred and harvester on Andoni. Plus one cred. Perfect. Okay, so they get two two monies. So bump them up. Richardson, you're gonna have more money when you go to build that base. Because they're poor as shit most of the time. Um nice. Alright, so they're done. Let's go over to uh, here. So we've got Purity Initiative up next. So Purity, they bought a party machine on Oninsa. They've been trying to deal with Majid. Let's go take a look at their situation because they... P 
security initiative wants to destroy intel cunning assets. So let's see if they share a cunning asset location with anybody. I think their idea is to move that that party machine somewhere using their freighter contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's move the party machine to um, Majid. Because they're in the same system, right? Okay, so activate abilities. Move party machine to uh, Majid. Do they have any other things they can activate? Freighter contract. I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. And the freighter costs something, I think. The freighter contract requires one fat cred. Okay. So we'll take that. Oops. We'll take that away from them. All right. So Majid, they, they couldn't come at them the other way. So they're going to try to politically, they're going to try and politically take over. Uh, they're going to try to politically take over the, the planet. They're going to go to Majid and be like, no, purity now, purity forever, and start to, to try to like tear down the philosophical control that people have over Majid. Try to maybe start like a slave uprising or something. I feel like that'd be like, that'd be their jam. So uh, yeah, okay, cool. Um, oh, that was the, yeah, you're right. That was the purity initiative I took that. I need to take that from. Faction trucker, purity, where are you? There it is, yeah. They got lots of money, too. Yeah, I got it. Thanks, everybody. Okay. So, that's it for them. Uh, number four. So, one, two, three, four. Okay, Cabral. Uh, Le Republic. They still have the organization moles, don't they? They're still alive. I think they're going to need to counterattack. Uh, let's take a look. Republic of Cabral. Uh, yeah, they do. Okay, those org moles are going to get one more attack. So it's cunning versus cunning. Let's see if they can uh, they can take over the planet or what here. Defend post tech. Survey says. Um, we're looking at cunning versus cunning, meaning defending with one and attacking with, yeah, this is where they get to really rip them up, with six. So d10 plus six versus d10 plus one. Oh yeah, they can't do anything about that. A damn good effort. A damn good effort, but no, they're gonna destroy them. Uh, Okay, so they are, um, they're gonna, they're gonna deal damage, uh, so it's a success. And the damage they deal is, the org moles deal 2d6. Seven damage, and I think that might be enough. Yeah, that kills them. All right, so the Andonian armed forces now have nothing left to defend themselves with. Um, Seven damage to post tech, kill it. So the army is disbanded essentially. Like there's just nobody, there's just nobody available to defend the 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 the, the planet anymore. The the army dissolves. They have a base of influence, but uh, next time they're gonna need to press the attack so they can take over the planet because they want to be the legit government. Pretty soon, what's gonna happen is Andoni is gonna crumble, and they're going to. Um, Cabral is going to be like, we claim this land for Spain, France, I guess, Neo-France, and um, and now we own it. This is our planet, Scrubs. So, uh, yeah, that's intense. And Donnie's going to be a Cabralese colony soon um, with Richardson, you know, just like hanging out because, you know, they're just friendly neighborhood scientists. Why not? Okay, uh, so that's it for them. Uh, our next one is faction eight. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The Madari Syndicate. So the Syndicate, they need more units <laughs> to be able to infiltrate more. So they're gonna buy something. I think they're just gonna buy more smugglers, but let's see how much money they have. 
Madari Syndicate has 17 bucks, and they need to get inside enemy territory. Um, so, let's see. Yeah, no, Andoni is like a few acres of ash. <laughs> um, so we're looking at the asset tracker to see if we can find nearby systems with a with someone on them that um, Madari doesn't already have a base, or he doesn't have somebody there. So Cabral is covered, Asa is covered, uh, Oninsa is covered, Majid is covered. So where can they go? Hoveda? Uh, that seems like a mistake. Oh, Strophios. Strophios, obviously. All right, so we're going to give them some new... They're going to buy some new units, and they're going to try to infiltrate Strophios. So, because who doesn't like drugs more than people stuck in a religious war? Um, so with the intent to infiltrate Strophios, bought... And anything they buy is... Um, Anything they buy is stealthed automatically, and it appears in the Bakhtiar system, uh, or anywhere they have a base of influence. So Bakhtiar is close. They have a base of influence on Asa, I think. So let's see what we can buy with, what did I say, 15 credits? 17. And they have a uh, six cunning. So let's buy them a cunning. A demagogue. Now, there's already enough of those on that planet. Some more, or should we get some more organization moles? Uh, I like smugglers because they're cheap and they can move themselves around. So let's let's just buy smugglers for two. Bought smugglers on Asa. Okay, so we got some new smugglers on Asa. Because they, they have one, right? They have a base on Asa. Yeah, they have a base of influence on Asa, perfect, okay. So the Madari Syndicate, Smugglers. Why didn't that autofill? That's weird. Huh, okay, I'm gonna delete this line. Spreadsheets, how do they work? <laughs> On Asa. This is a good planet to be buying things on. Okay, perfect. So, uh, all set. Uh, so that means uh, I have to just take their money away and we can carry on. And I'll make a note. Uh, yeah, I made it already. So they're going to go infiltrate Strophios. Perfect. Okay. Uh, cool. So before them is Majid. Oh yeah, Majid is going to go try and fuck with the Purity Initiative. Because Majid's jam right now, they want to expand by destroying wealth assets. But this, this sector is not very wealthy. Maybe I need to... Maybe I need to... Oh yeah, I need to stealth that asset. Thank you. Because otherwise I would forget. It's just like light blue, sort of periwinkle color. the first one down okay thanks maybe I should just change their goal because like they they're in kind of a rough spot right like Majid's kind of on their own yeah you know what we're gonna change their goal we're gonna give them uh, gosh destroy a rival faction I, I think they're gonna try to like close in on themselves they're gonna need to they're gonna need to um, make some money. So we're going to do Peaceable Kingdom. Because they got their butt kicked last time. Um, and now they have some stealthy guys to defend them. So let's let's do that. We'll give them Peaceable Kingdom. They're going to abandon... Oops. They're going to abandon their, their mission. Can I... No. Okay. Peaceable Kingdom... I just wanted to make a note, but it's it's fine. I know what it is. Uh, it's one of four so far, and these guys have one of four as well. And peaceful kingdom, one of four. Yeah, this sector is a bad place to live. That's my like least favorite thing about these Google spreadsheets is that writing an actual note is so difficult. Just watch me struggle. 
Visible kingdom. Where are you? We're done. Okay. And that skips their turn. Honestly, the Mandarinate's going to get bought out by the Madari. I think that'll be the next thing that happens. The Madari Syndicate will just be like, yeah, we could use a legit government. We're going we're gonna to own the Madari Syndicate. Uh, cool. Okay. So I think all we have left are Fotenhauer and Hoveda. So it's Hoveda first, then Fotenhauer. So Hoveda, um, they're blocked from having anybody come to Strophios. I think they're going to just keep up the attack. What do they got on Strophios? Hoveda. They've got their organization moles. Oh, and the popular movement is still alive. Okay, good. So we'll just keep the fight up. Attack new profit on Strophios. This is what I love about this, because I don't know who's going to win, right? It's going to be somebody's holy land, and then the drug dealers are going to take over. Okay, so they're going to defend, and they're going to... Oops. Now, New Prophet is going to defend with... What do they have that's decent for defending here? Uh, New Prophet can defend with the demagogue if they want to risk it. No, they'll defend with this last this last remaining blockade runner. See, now, like, Hoveda, uh, Brainview, uh, Brainview, who is my my co-author of all things Hovaden, um, seriously, thanks, Brain, for bringing so much life to the Hovaden Caliphate for me, um, mentioned they have a lot of drugs but no fleet. Might be useful to buy one. They're not going to that kind of war. This is a war of mines. This is a, a counterinsurgency war. They're just trying to rein in the mistake they made by letting the New Prophet leave the planet in the first place. So New Prophet will defend with their blockade runners. Um, I don't know how that's possible, but we'll, we'll work it out. It's like last time. Uh, let's see who wins. So this is Organization Moles. So the org moles are uh, CVC. So new profit six, Hoveda eight. All right, six V eight. Uh, okay, so the attack, D10 plus six, 12, nice. And D10 plus eight, this is the defender, 13. Okay, so it failed. Or no, it, it succeeded. Sorry, I was I had it flipped around. So it succeeded. Uh, the attack succeeded. Success, and they deal the org moles deal how much? Oh well, it doesn't matter. They they destroy blockade runners. So they ground the fleet, which is kind of cool. Um, so uh, let's see. They ground the fleet, and that means the blockade runners are destroyed. All right, delete row. Perfect. Okay, so now they can keep attacking, and they're going to attack with their other asset, which is the same as last time, popular movement. And these ones are going to defend this time. They don't have that to defend with. So they're going to have to defend with... Is this organization moles? Yeah, defend with org moles. So cutting communication lines, causing chaos in the ranks. Um, the moles, the, the profit moles inside the Hovaden popular movement on Strophios are going to try to defend themselves. So the popular movement is going to attack with, um, I think it's the same, Hovaden popular movement, CVC. Yeah, pretty much exactly the same role. So let's see what happens. So this is uh, D10 plus 8 for the attack and D10 plus 6 for the defense. Best they can do is tie. Ugh. Ugh. Ruined. Okay, so it's a failure, or it's a success, so it's a failure to defend. And the damage the popular movement causes is 2d6. Six damage. All right, so six damage to, what do we say, the org moles, was it? Yeah. So they're toast too. Oh, New Prophet is losing this fight. Go figure. So one thing that I really like about the mechanics of this game, 
the the faction turn specifically is that the big keep getting bigger and the small get stomped out. Like that's just how it works. It's very realistic that way. There's no David and Goliath here. Like it's just Hoveda and the high beam will stomp all over everything. It's just a question of how long they're allowed to do that before the other factions get big enough to fight them. Or if you have multiple factions attacking, they even if they team up, they're taking individual attacks on them. So uh, yeah, the new the new prophets suffering real bad. Uh, they've lost two units. The demagogue still lives, but is not being protected by very much. It might be time to flee the planet while the transportation lockdown is there. We'll see what happens. Yes, unless you're Fates Rangers, in which case you kick the shit out of everybody. Speaking of whom, <laughs> back on uh, Starbase Oninsa, these guys need a new goal. Uh, Fotenhauer needs a new goal because they are goalless. So Fotenhauer, they've got 19. Um, let's... Let's give them... Let's give them... Um, well, let's see what our goals are here. Let's give them Invincible Valor. This one seems like fun. Destroy a force asset with a minimum purchase rating higher than their force rating. So they have to go after something big, like, I don't know, a capital fleet or a giant spaceship full of nano vikings. Yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to take Invincible Valor. This is this is Miss Fate being like, fuck it, man. I can shoot down fleets by myself. Let's do this thing. So she's going to get all gutsy and, and try to blow things up. Now, to that end, she's going to need some spaceships. So Fotenhauer, they can afford uh, up to eight, um, eight force assets. They got 19. Let's see if we can buy them something. I guess we could save up. Ooh, planetary defenses. Oh yeah, no. That's what they're gonna do. Okay, so they're gonna they're gonna make massive mag cannons and seeker missile arrays on Oninsa. Oninsa is about to be the best defended planet in the system. So that costs them uh, 18 of their credits, uh, which I believe that they have. Photon hair, right? 18. Yep, they have one credit left, and they're buying. Um, let's see, they're gonna buy. Here we go, Fotenhauer. And they're buying planetary defenses. Wicked. On Oninsa. Here we go, okay. Cool, so now if the Warmind tries to, oh, did I give them an impossible goal? Oh, I did, because their force is eight. Okay, we'll give them a, we'll give them a better goal. Let's uh, let's make it um, military conquest because they can't actually do that one. You're right. Good point. So we'll go after smaller ones uh, instead. Now that the planet is defended, fate can leave it. Military conquest. There we go. Okay. Perfect. Uh, and I think that is everybody, yeah? Uh, yep, okay, so bought planetary defenses for Oninsa. Battleground Oninsa. So now, like, here's what happened, right? So Oninsa Libre and the, Oninsa has the most storied history of everybody in the system, right? So like it started off where, um, you know, Oninsa Libre fought against the royal family. There was like royal family and all this. They're like back and forth. They're fighting for months and months. Finally, the royal family gets weak enough that the period initiative rises, seizes the control of the government, right? Oninsa Libre continues to fight them. The royals go away. Oninsa wants to, to, they go into hiding in the mountains. While that's happening, the new government, the purity government, they hire Fates Rangers to come and like go into the mountains and fuck them up. They start doing that. High Beam shows up to start bombarding their enemies, the Photonhauer. Photonhauer blows them up. Purity is busy fighting the Madari Syndicate, and now Photonhauer is like, we've built all these like planetary orbital guns. Weird. Why would we do that? This is the only TL5 planet in the sector. Wonder what that's about. So 
you know, the reason why they care so much about Anissa is A, Mr. Sakarian is from there. So this is me, me acting on Jeff's intent. Uh, it's also that it's a huge planet in terms of strategy, right? They have the technical infrastructure to build weapons you can't get anywhere else in the sector. So, of course, Votenhauer would want to control it. So I think the most interesting things here are, you know, we're playing the long game. We only play it, this is only the 15th turn, and we've been playing 40-odd sessions of the... Um, you know, of the campaign. And what we're doing here is watching the game slowly develop in a certain direction. Um, I need to make a note right now on my swan song notes here, because we're gonna we're gonna be playing this week. So swan song. Point number one, call from Sigrid to Eric. Dot dot dot. Alright, GM notebook, you are ready to roll. And that's it for us for today. Uh, this has been turn 15. Uh, it is now March of the year 3201 here in Asgard Sigma, home of the Swan Song. Um, things are things are changing. Things are going uh, things are going real interesting. And and this stuff, like the fact that we have so much interesting stuff going on, developed from a purely random chance. All of this is random. None of this stuff came from a source book. It's all tags that were added together randomly. And we as players built this whole idea of what is the universe like just from those tags, right? Like if you want to see a sandbox game that is doing its job, you're looking at it, right? Stars Without Number is doing a fantastic job with us. And we in response are playing with the tools that we're given to create this incredibly unusual universe about like, okay, so there's like a war in the middle of the sector. It's perfect, right? Because they're surrounded by everybody. What happens when when Varvaresos is done? Where do you think the, the Hovaden Caliphate is gonna go next, right? Majid, right here, Oninsa, right here, right? Anaximander University, um, like all of these different places have just been added to the sector over time by us, by us like just coming up with ideas uh, in play and by you. The audience because like I said like blue fever is not mine that came from a fan creation so much of the flavor of the Hovaden uh, Caliphate came from it so if you're watching this and you have ideas about like hey maybe this could happen or hey maybe they're like this or maybe this planet is like this tell me tweet at me at skinny ghost uh, hit me up on uh, the subreddit on JP subreddit hit me JP or if you're on our math squad discord just send me a PM because I love that shit and this is a much bigger universe than I can handle on my own which is why I do the GM turns here with you. So uh, yeah, that's it for another another episode of this guy. We'll um, we'll tune in again in April of three thousand two hundred and one, uh, and we'll uh, we'll do some more uh, GM turn. Hopefully, it won't be quite as long as it was between now and the last one. So thanks so much for coming, everybody. Uh, if you know me, you know this is my favorite stream. It's like this is where Masquad got its name. So I'm always happy to do it. Good to see everyone. Have a good one. Stay safe. Look out for nanorobots. We'll see you on the next one song.